It's a pleasure to be here with all of you uh, today to talk about Gen AI and education. Um, for those who don't know what Gen AI is, imagine a person who's often wrong, but never in doubt. <laughs> now be honest with me, how many of you thought about your spouse? <laughs> I did not, okay, but that's Gen AI. Um, and what I want to talk about is uh, what happens when we have large language models like ChatGPT and Generative AI intersect with institutions like Harvard, where I sit and I've been there for the last 27 years, currently overseeing teaching and learning for the university. Let me just um, ask you a question. How many of you think in the next five to 10 years, Generative AI will have a very large impact on education? Just raise your hands. How many would say a moderate impact? So we have a few. How many would say little to no impact? Pretty much none. Okay. Uh, let me come back to this. Here's a chart showing the rise of technologies and the time it took for different technologies to reach 50% penetration in the US economy. So if you look at computers, it actually took 20 years to reach about 30% penetration. Radio, it took about 20 years to reach half the population. Uh, TV, about 12 years. Smartphones, about seven years. Smart speakers, about uh, four years. And chatbots, about two and a half years. This is part of the reason we're talking about this today. Here's what we know so far about Gen AI and education. First, the transformative potential stems from its intelligence. That's the I in AI. Okay. Secondly, as prudent educators, we should wait until the output is smart enough and gets better and it's less prone to hallucinations or wrong answers. Third, given the state of where bot tutors are, it's unlikely, I think many believe, that it's going to be ultimately as good as the best active learning teachers who have refined their craft over many, many years and decades. Fourth, and Sal Khan talks about this, this is likely to ultimately level the playing field in education. And finally, the best thing we can do is to make sure that we secure access to everyone and let them experiment. Before you take a screenshot of this, don't, because I'm going to argue all of this is wrong. Now that I hopefully have your attention, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes arguing why. Uh, let's actually start with the first one, which is the transformative potential stems from how intelligence the output is. I would argue, and in fact, we just heard this from the previous speaker, we've been actually experiencing AI for 70 years. Machine learning for upwards of 50 years, deep learning for 30 years, transformers for seven to eight years. This has been an improvement gradually over time. There were some discrete changes recently, but the fundamental reason why this has taken off, I would argue, has less to do with the discrete improvements in intelligence two years ago, as opposed to the improvement in access or the interface that we have with the intelligence. What do I mean by that? I'm going to give you the one minute history of human communication. So we started out sitting around campfires, talking to each other. From there, we started writing pictures on the walls, that was graphics. From there, we start writing scrolls and books. That was formal text. And finally, the pinnacle of human, human communication, which was ones and zeros, and that's mathematics. That's the evolution of human to human communication. The evolution of human to computer communication has gone exactly in the opposite direction, which is 60, 70 years ago, starting with punch cards, ones and zeros. For those of you old enough might remember that. Then we move to things like DOS prompts, commands that we had to input. By the way, and this is the fundamental thing, the big difference between Windows 1.0 and Windows 3.0, functionally they were almost identical. The big difference was the interface, meaning we moved to a graphical user interface and suddenly seven-year-old kids could be using computers. That I think is more similar to the revolution we're seeing now, which is AI for a long time was the province of computer programmers, software engineers, tech experts, with ChatGPT, it basically became available to every one of us on the planet through a simple search bar. 
That's basically the reason for the revolution. Where is this going? Probably towards just audio. And I don't know if anyone can guess what's the next evolution of this in terms of communication. Neural, reading emotions. You might argue basically us grunting and shaking our arms. Formally, that would be called the Apple Vision Pro. Uh, you could argue we are regressing as a species. On the other hand, you could argue that in fact what's happening is that the distance between humans and computers is fundamentally shrinking. So that's the first thing I just want to say, which is fundamentally this is about access. What does this mean? It means that, does anyone know what this is? This is Photoshop. There's a lot of people who spend one year, two years, four years trying to master this, graphics design. Arguably, we don't need this kind of expertise anymore. We can simply get it by communicating directly in natural language with computers now. This, for those of you who don't know, is Epic. It's a medical software record. My wife, who's a cardiologist, does not like this. She spends two hours every single day filling in notes on these software records. You could argue sometime in the near future that communication will become much simpler. By the way, one of the things to keep in mind is for every one of you sitting in organizations, and by the way, this is a happy organization, to think about what this is likely to do to the org structure. If you think about the bottom of this organization, there's people who have expertise in different kinds of software, okay? Some expertise in Photoshop, some in Concur, uh, some in different kinds of software. You could argue there's gonna be consolidation within those functions. The middle managers who used to oversee all these software experts, it's likely we're gonna see shrinkage there. In fact, you could argue all the way that the person at the top could in fact do sales, graphics design, design, marketing, everything by just interacting directly with the computer. It's not a stretch to say, and some people predict this, that the first one person billion dollar company is gonna be likely to be born pretty soon. Okay, and people are already working on this.